Let me see those claps, y'all. Let me see those claps. Y'all already know what it is. Yo, my man. God. Look at my man. What up, baby? What's good, baby? Everybody, welcome. <laughs> Prolific. Y'all listen. Y'all know Miss Big Bub. He was born Frederick Lee Drakeford. That's what it right. is. From right. The, y'all already know from the great group, today we have Big Bub in the house. What's up? What's up, my guy? What's oh, good with you? God. Yo, let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. You know how things are now. Everybody, you know, first of all, we're going we're gonna to start first. with Because I see you got your mask on. I see oh, yeah, it's real. I'm outside. It's real. I want to know, how are you feeling about this COVID situation? Just tell me how you feel about COVID in general. And have you lost anybody during this time? Well... Well, this is how I feel, Dame. I'm like this. Look, God is going to do what he's going to do and what he says he's going to do. And I tell everybody to remain calm. Um, I lost like 12 people within three weeks since I've been out here in Jersey. I came back from London, had a show in London, and then I couldn't move because they canceled all my shows for the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, but I'm up here with my parents. Thank God I'm up here with them so I can do all the moving around and stuff that they need. Right. Um, but we just got to remain calm, Dane. Listen, and that, look, everybody know that is what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Everybody losing loved ones all over, all over, man, all over the country, all over the world. People are losing loved ones, man. And sometimes it's just Word. pre-existing uh, things. And now this COVID came and made that even worse, especially if you're older and all this stuff, man. But like you said, we got to keep our mind on God, keep our faith, keep ourselves Word. strong. Keep our Word. music strong and, and do what it is. But forget about mm -hmm. all that right now. It ain't about that right now. What mm -hmm. it's about, it's about 1988. Woo! <laughs> Let's go a little bit before then, because I think before then, you were, it was a group, was you, Love, Chief, well, Larry Chief, and then you got Larry Love. Yes. You got one Yeah, and West. You got Larry, Larry Chief, Larry Love, West, and yourself. Correct? Right. Okay, because right. we got two Larrys in the group, because we can get confused, so we gave Chief. Right, right, up, right. So that everybody can understand. So I want y'all to get this real clear. Y'all know how I get right. down on the truth. It's all about trying to, trying to get y'all to, to, to get something else out of somebody. Now, they were called right. the Jets. First. Is that correct? The gents? Yeah, we yeah, we was called the gents. Listen, Bernard Bell was in the gents too, um, Damien. Oh, wait a minute, y'all. Well, I hope you got some new information. Bernard Bell, the producer, writer extraordinaire, was also in the gents. Okay, so let's stay there for a second. Let's stay right there. <laughs> let's stay at the gents. So the gents were five people. Who came up with the gents and how did that how did y'all formulate that? Because y'all were childhood friends, correct? Yes, me, yeah, myself, Bernard Bell, Regina Bell, um, Larry, Love McCain, you know what I'm saying, and my boy Ronald and Hal Tillery, he passed away. But they, they, we were the gents, and then later on, here comes Wes, you know what I'm saying, me and Love still stuck it out, so here comes Wes, and then, you know, here comes Chief, and then, you know, Andre Harrell met us, and then he said, yo, go to Teddy Riley, man, I'm going to play nice Stop, 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 no, you can't, you can't. Okay, no, okay, no, okay. No, no, okay. No, 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 okay, no, no, okay, no, no. I won't do that. <laughs> I want to stick here, I want to stay right here with the Jets. So when the Jets got together, did the right. Jets ever create music as who y'all were? Mm -hmm. ever, did y'all ever create a song? Did y'all go out as the Jets? Oh, yeah. We had a single call for You, My Baby Love. That shit, yeah. Okay, so you had a you had a single call for You, My Baby Love. Who wrote and produced that single? Uh, my boy, Ronald Scruggs. Ronald Scruggs. I know, man, I remember, man, Ronald Scruggs. Okay, so what did y'all do during that time? Did, did y'all do, uh, what kind of shows did y'all do? Did y'all do, you know, schools? Did you did you go around the, the area? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did the Latin Quarters. We did um, shows with Lisa Lisa and the Cult Jam. And, oh, man, we, we was putting in some work before we came to New York, really, though. You okay. know what I'm saying? We had to put in some work, and then we hit Latin Quarters. Okay, so y'all put in crazy work. First of all, I want everybody to understand 
who's on this line, like who's here right now. This is one of the most soulful singing voice cats. He's my brother, my friend, my I, like. I love this cat. So it's not just something hey, like, my my cat right here. So we go, we go, go deep. I love this cat, and 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 so we talked about. The Jets was, was that 86, 87, or was that still 87, 88? No, check it out. Yeah. That joint was 84. 84. 84. So 84 until when? How, how long did the Jets go? Look, the Jets went all the way to 86, and then Andre Harrell discovered us. Huh? Stop right there. Stop right there. That's what that's what, it Stop. happened fast for. Okay, so, so look, here we go. It happened fast for us, man. So no, it happened that shit. I know it happened fast for y'all because so we gonna get there because me okay. me and your life, we kinda got on the same road. You feel me? So mm -hmm. we're gonna go to Andre hearing y'all. First of all, rest in peace, Andre Harrell of Uptown. Rest in peace. Rest Word in peace. up. Okay, so let's say Andre saw you and he said, yo, you know who I think y'all should deal with? Look, if I use Andre work, y'all should fuck with. I'm going to put y'all with this young cat named Teddy Riley, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. y'all got introduced, you, Larry, Wes, and, and Love. Let me just keep it like that, right? Y'all got introduced mm -hmm. to Teddy Riley. Now, when Teddy Riley saw y'all and heard y'all, because first of all, I, when he heard your voice, he was like, what? How did you go from the gents and who came up with the name today? Who came up with that name? Yo, the crazy part is this. When, okay, see, like you're saying, like when Andre Harrell told us to go meet up with, um, what you call him? Gene came up with the name today. Okay. Gene Griffin. Okay, so Gene Griffin, because at this time, y'all, and I want y'all, everybody that's listening here, I want you to, to take this ride with us, because this is a ride. It's not, not nothing simple here. We're going to take this ride. So Gene came up with the name today. Many people think Teddy came up with the name. So I'm glad you're saying this, right? So we get, get truth yeah. out here. Gene came up with the name today. Now, for everybody that don't know, GR Productions was around. It was Teddy and Gene. Teddy Riley and Gene. Right. And Griffin. Right. They... They get introduced to the Jets from Andre Harrell. When Gene see them, he said, ah, the Jets ain't going to happen. We're going to call you today, right? Right, so right. Then he hears your voice, and he goes, okay, I know what kind of record these cats need to go. Now, let's, let's, I'm, I'm, a, I'm trying, I'm going to try to, for the people to paint the picture. When y'all when y'all get your, your first your first album, y'all get in the studio with Teddy and y'all do the self entitled album today, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now in this album, who wrote the songs? Who wrote the songs and came up with those melodies? Uh, uh Bob? Oh, we oh we did. Of course. You know your brother did. You know that. Yeah, I'm just, me and Chief me and me and Chief. Me and Chief. Um, wrote all the whole album. We wrote, we wrote the whole album. You know what I'm saying? I, I wrote him and me. I wrote him and me at um at 17 years old. Oh, wait. Y'all still y'all still in high school? Wait a minute. Look, look. You were 17 when you wrote him mm -hmm. or me. You wrote that mm -hmm. in high school. Mm hmm. Okay. And y'all just heard that song. First of all, y'all already know that was one of the biggest records. Now on Billboard, that charted. If I'm in my head, it charted number three. It charted number three. Number three. three. Number three on Billboard, because yeah. also on that on that album was "Girl, I Got My Eyes on You," and that charted number one. With okay. no video, that's how big that record was. That shit went number one with no with no video. Now, but Bob, it went there because first of all, your voice, man. And I, I want people to understand when your voice was on a record, it. It sounded, it resounded over everything. So it's not like the music took over the song. You made the song come to life because your voice was so different. You know what I'm saying? And like, do, and do you feel that way? Like how do how do you how do you feel about being in the studio? How was that? How was it being in the studio with Teddy and Gene?
doing the making of that today record. I want you oh, to tell man. You how how was how was it doing that on all platforms? It was dope. We, we was recording because you know we was recording. We were recording some of the the records. Remember um, at Tony Bennett's son at Tony Bennett's house. Yes. You know the jazz singer Tony Bennett. You know yeah. the icon. We we did some of that in his house in Inglewood, and we did some of the stuff in the um, project on 129th Street in St. Nick. Um, the shit was amazing because Teddy. He's a, he's a genius, you know. Um, he's a perfectionist, so that's why we're so, we're so hard as entertainers and stuff like that. And what we do, right. that's we come from that school, you know. He right. he he pulls out the whip on your ass when it's time to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fact. And um, I think that's why we're so passionate in what we do and so disciplined when it comes to stage presence and and making sure our shit is right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So doing. So during that time, so you're saying that that whole that whole era of the making of the album, I want y'all to understand that today and Guy came out right with each other in 1988. We both released our albums in 1988. We were the two biggest groups on GR Productions. That no, that, we were the two biggest. We was the two big. Yo, listen, <laughs> we were the two biggest groups until the fuckery happened. Yeah, no, we go, we go, wait, 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 all right, yeah, yeah. One of the two biggest groups during that time, but uh, I'm gonna call it the New Jack Swing Tour, right? I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna call it, and we all was on tour together. How did you feel on that tour? <laughs> and and during the tour, um, was there any <laughs> discord or did any discord start happening between you? any other members in any capacity? Um, I mean, we had our differences and we know why now. You know what I'm saying? You know, the separation, the way they, the way they market the group was just, it was just wrong, you know? I, I was, first of all, I was never the lead singer of the group anyway. It just, just happened that, it just happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, it was, it was some differences because of the fact that the way they market the group was like, this is Big Bub, and these are his dancers. You know that? Nah, it was in light. It was always Chief, Wes, Love, and Bub, and that's what we was all about. You know, right. they did that shit. You know, we ain't had no blueprint to this shit, Damien. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like when we came down into Virginia, it was like, yo, man, Timmy Gallon's not in the group no more. Yo, we're going to get Aaron, bro. We got to go to Virginia and get Damien. Yeah, yeah. Facts. I'll never forget that shit. Yeah, facts. Facts. And I, our records, and our records wasn't even out. We went, we came down in Virginia. I'll never forget. That's right, future records, baby. Yep. Word up. We came down there and we got Damien. We was like, yo, that's gonna be dope. All right, Teddy got Teddy got the group now. Guy, okay, cool. Guy in today. We about to come smash the world. Yeah. With that we shit, did. we was coming with, and, and we, we did. And we did, and, and we did. So uh, I mean, in in this aspect, when after that first album, it was so successful. It was, it was so big. You had a, you had you had you had two major records, a lot of hits on the, on the album. Two major ones, as we said, him or me, and girl, I got my eyes on you, right? And toured like crazy. Everybody, the image, the style, the colors, everything was was popping. Then there's a shakeup, as you're saying right now. You let people see. At, then there's a a, a, a shakeup because. They started marketing almost like it was you and them. It's like right, so for me, it's right. Bub and them. So I can imagine the other three members going like, you no, right. like what the what the what the fuck is up? But before that, even before it got too far, and y'all kept the friendship going and everything, y'all go from MCA Records, and I think John, no Motown, Motown. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Motown. But but you, I think you went to Motown when Jevil left MCA. He took y'all over to Motown. No, no. Here's what really happened, Dave. Okay. This going to bug you out. Okay. Before you got there, Andre was taking today to Uptown. Teddy couldn't be in the group because Gene was like, nah, man, that's their own thing. None of them boys from Jersey, man, that they had their own thing, man. You get your own group. Listen, 
we supposed to be at Uptown, right? Yeah. Then it would have been a, pro a conflict of interest because of the fact that, okay, now Teddy got his group. Now we're going to put Guy on Uptown right. and we're going to take Bubba and them to Gerald Busby. Right. And that's how that happened. That's why today wasn't on Uptown because cause Andre was like, yo, I got to have Bubba. I got I to gotta have Bubba. I got because Andre was on that. Right. You know, me and Eddie F were just talking about this. He was like, yo, Andre was like, yo, I want them. We were supposed to be on Uptown, but it, you know, it didn't work that way. But okay. it's all good. So, see, but we all still family. So, okay, this is absolutely. This, but this is what I want people to hear because this is very important. So, you go from you're supposed to be in Uptown because of the conflict. Guy was on Uptown. Then they took you went over to Joe Busby. Then Joe Busby left MCA, went over to Motown, took y'all, maybe the good girls. I think it was you, mm -hmm. the good girls, a couple other groups over to Motown. When y'all get to Motown, you come out, you come out with your second album, right? And I think that's the second album is the new formula. That's like about yeah. about nineteen. Yeah, why right? you getting funky on me? Yeah, why you getting funky? That's the new formula with why you getting funky on me about nineteen ninety. Now, when you did that record, there was no, if if I'm correct, there was no Teddy Valley production on that album whatsoever. No, none. So who? did that album because that album had three major joints right so you you had oh not alley jr not alley jr um not alley jr no not alley jr is the md for luther vandross him right. um bernard bell is on there and you know we you know we did the rest so we we had to we had to do what we had to do you know what i mean right so you had you had why you getting funky on me which was also in a movie correct House party, house party, and that shit was big. That shit was humongous. That was super huge, extremely huge. So mm -hmm. you have that. I think that goes number two, and then you have, um, I got, I got the feel. I got, a, I got the feeling. I got the feeling with Spider Man and Freeze, and that and that goes number to number twelve, right? Yeah, and yeah. That goes, and then it goes overseas, and then it hits. Well, no, I think, I think, why you get fucked. With 94, which which song went to the 94 in the UK charts? Single UK charts. Was that was that I got the was that um 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 what you call it from from the uh uh the first album from today album or was that from the new formula album? Probably that, new formula. That was new formula, right? Mm -hmm. so I got the feeling, yeah. I got the feeling goes 94 on the UK chart, correct? Yeah, but we was big as shit over in the UK. No, y'all was super big. That's what I'm about. That's where I'm going. Y'all was y'all motherfuckers was big as shit too. Now. Yeah, but but here's the difference, though, and people should hear this. We were big overseas, but y'all was overseas a lot more than what we were. As far as touring. No, 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 no. Me, no, 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 Dave. Um, we today never been to London. Today never been to Germany. Today been to Japan. And nowhere um, else. And nowhere else. Mm-mm. That's why that's why they want us so bad over there right now. That's why they're like, yo, today come over here, it's over. Because when I go over there as a solo artist, listen, when I go over there as a solo artist, they go ass crazy. I sold out the Hammersmith by myself, Damien. Listen, listen. I'm a, let, let me go back. I ain't trying to put, put myself into it. When I came out with my album in 94, when I came out with my album in 94, that was my shit. They wanted guys so bad when I did the Hammersmith Odeon three nights by myself sold out. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. So I can imagine how they felt with you because when they, here's about what happens overseas. When they see you, they see today. You follow me? So they mm -hmm. see you, they wanted you, but they going, oh my God, that's the guy from today and they knew Jack Swing and Blah, 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 because we're in that era, right? We we are New Jack Swing. We are. Yes, we are. New yes, Jack we are. God yes, we are. Rex Today. We yes, are yeah, Rex and Effects. Yes, we are. Jack Swing. You understand? And if it wasn't for us doing what we do, not, no other groups that they are trying to say is New Jack Swing, because I like to say this to it. Tell me if you feel the same way. I, I do. I personally cannot stand when they say, and no disrespect to what I'm about to say to anybody. 
But next, 112, uh, Make Edition. So they are not New Jack Swing groups. No, none of them. Not even New Edition. Not even New Edition in any capacity. But when you hear New Jack Swing, they mention these groups as if these groups were New Jack Swing. It was only two New Jack Swing groups, period, period, point blank. And it was Guy. And it's Guy and today. That's it. So right here, you hear it from Big Bub, and, and you hear it from me. Those were the only two right. real New Jack Swing groups. There were, there's not no right. group wasn't no New Jack Swing group. Everybody, no. everybody else had to go back inside no. of and get that New Jack Swing sound. So here it is. People are confusing the fact that when ADF, Tim Fife, everybody had to go go back in the lab and change their groups next 112. They had to change the sound because the, mm -hmm. the next ring sound was so strong. When everybody was doing that other funky stuff before they was going to come out with, when that got big, everybody went in and started trying to do that Teddy Valley, New Jack Swing sound, that, that, that facts. Hip, -hop, facts. hip hop drum sound. So that's the facts of it. So right here, Bob is telling y'all the facts here. All right? Now, oh. we're going to get a little bit Funkier here right now, a little bit. Just, okay, let's get funky. Just a tad bit before, but but before we get funky, your group broke up around 1990, 1991. Y'all broke up, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, like around ninety. Yeah, around that. Yeah, okay, ninety, ninety. Yeah. The group broke up, and I want to ask two questions. <clears throat> One, what? Okay. When y'all broke up, how did y'all speak to each other at all after y'all broke up, or what was that vibe during that time? You know what I'm saying, like. Yo, that shit vibe? was so, it was so, it was so crazy because remember, both of us, you know, guy and today we're leaving Gene, of course. Um, in the process of of of, of you know us separating from Gene, um, this is crazy. That's when I flew out to Atlanta. I flew out to Atlanta. I did Why You Getting Funky On Me. Dallas Austin was in the booth with me. I'll never forget Dallas Austin was sitting right next to the button. I did the joint in one take. Peace and love to Dallas. Yeah, salute Dallas Austin. And um, and Gene Griffin, you know, he gave me a check for 10 grand. Yes. I, I said, nah. I said, give me four checks so I can split it with my brothers. Mm. And that's when Gene said, that's what's up, man. He said, your loyalty with the group. I said, always. It's always going to be loyalty with the group. Now, now here's the other thing. Gerald Busby wanted me to leave mm. the group. Matter of fact, he didn't want to work with the group no more. I was like, y'all want Babyface Jimmy Jam for the next project. I had a meeting with him, with me and Tom sitting downstairs, you know, Burr Padel's office. Right. And he's like, yo. I got this new group called Boys to Men. I want you to be the fifth member in there because they had a fifth member and he's not in the group no more. And it was a five member group. Yeah. So I remember Dallas calling me like, yo, man, you know, blah, blah, blah about, you know, Boys to Men. So I told Joe Busby no. And that was the end of the group. That was, that, the was, end that, was, that, was that was the end of the group. Okay. During this time at Motown, can we talk mm -hmm. about Joe Busby? God bless Joe Busby. You God also, bless his soul. You also was an executive, if I'm correct, at Motown, correct? Yes, executive VP at Motown. Um, Andre Harrell hired me. And during that time, what albums did you, because, I mean, your, 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 your stats for the people you worked with, you know, I can, I can look, uh, uh, Boy George, Luther Bandros, Rod, I mean, Ray Kwan, Mary J. Blige, Johnny Kemp, Bobby mm. Brown. Like, what? What did you do during that time as a as an executive VP? What was? Well, you know, I, look, 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 look. This when you learn that part about the business, how artists get look shelved, look dropped. Yeah, you know, and and you see all these things when you're behind. I'm like, wow, well, that damn, that happened to us. Right. I can see what happened to us now. Now I can see. Right. I'm, I'm in the corporate world now. Right. But it's like, like all the artists I worked with on that on the roster at that time, 
they were good artists like Harsh Brown. We had Jason Weaver. We had Terrell Hicks. We had Boys the Men still on the roster. We had Johnny Gill, Anthony Hamilton. It, it was crazy just that it didn't work after a while because they let Andre go, so they had to let all of us go. You know what I'm saying? Got you. Got you. But when you, when you, was, when you were at that level, what did you learn for yourself? Because we're going we gonna to get into, and then we're going to go back. We're going to get into where the group broke up, you became an exec, you have all right. these groups that you just named that you was dealing with, and then 1992 comes right. in, and this is, it becomes the big bub era. So you got the album coming at you in 92 on East West Records, right? Ooh, what you know about with Sylvia Rome? Come on now. Uh -huh. So... You, you have that. How was how was that record? And 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 during this time of your solo career, and and I'm I'm gonna I'm go. I'm gonna take it step by step. Did you did you write and produce, co-produce everything on that record that coming at you in '92? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, Redhead Kingpin, he produced um I don't mind on my first album, the first single I don't mind. Da -da 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 -da. That's Redhead Kingpin. Shout out to my brother Redhead Kingpin. Um, then I had Herb Middleton. He did Telling Me Stories. But, you know, I wrote everything on the album. So. See, that's what, that's what I love. And we're going to get to that understanding. So that album, where did that album peak for you? Where did Coming At You peak for you on, on the charts? I know it was number one most added. And then um, it was top, top, top 30, top 40, top 30. Top 30, top 40. So Yeah, it was definitely... Cause I remember when Sylvia Rowan was like, "Yeah, baby, get ready to get the um nail to put your gold album on the wall." And I was like, "Oh shoot!" Because you know the the ballad, you know when ballads back then, when you drop a ballad, and that joint once it Boom. catch on fire, fire, you see, you that? can live with that. Fire. Yeah, fire, yeah, no doubt. So that album lasted ninety two. That album lasted from ninety two to ninety seven, and you you was actually doing some a lot of shows during that time on that album. Correct? Because... Yo, yeah, I, I tore it. Off of that Telling Me Stories album, that Coming At You album, like, No Lie. No Lie, Damien. I think I did at least two years of straight shows with that joint. Like, nah. Nah, I made like... I, I, you know, I'm going to throw the number at you. I made like, I, I made like a good almost uh, M, uh, M on, on the road. That's nice. And you're talking about 90... 92 to like yeah. 94. 92 to 94. That, that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that telling me story, that shit, that, oh, me stories did that shit, yo. Mm -hmm. Telling me stories, that record, I'm telling you, I tell people I never sold a mill, but I never missed a mill, but I always made a mill off of every single deal. Wait, say it again. Say it again, B. Say it again. I never sold a mill. I never missed a mill, but I always made a mill off of every single deal. <laughs> now, you know that, Listen, only somebody fly like him can say something like that. I want you to understand, but that is the Yo. that's the real talk. Let, let, let me go back to when 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 today broke up. I want everybody to know that I'm gonna get off of that. Guys broke up too in the in 1990. So yeah, that, that same time. It's like our worlds were almost identical. We was in the same tornado. And then we're going to... Yeah. I want everybody to keep that in mind. Keep, keep the tornado because I'm coming back to that. We was in the same tornado. Okay? But let's stay with his solo albums. In 97, you go to Kadar Entertainment and you do an album called Timeless. I never missed a meal. I always sold... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never sold a mill. I never missed a mill, but I always made a mill off of every single deal. Yo, he goes to time. So you got Timeless in 97. With Kadar. How did that album go? Like, what did you do on that record? All right, listen. I wrote majority, a lot of, you know, songs on that record. To Daddy, Teddy produced on it. Um, Mucho Scott. Mm. Um, Sprague. Okay. Leon Sil look, Leon Silvers, Mick Murphy from the system, 
Yeah, then you know I got Dave Hollister and all of them in the background singing a lot of joints with me. So you know, it was a dope out. Matter of fact, I was writing on the first Black Street album while I was working on that album. You feel me? Awesome. So that's how it, I was about to ask you those those two worlds had to collide in that aspect. Yeah. Right? So so your money, your money came started escalating because while you was doing your solo record and writing on your solo album and co-producing on your solo records, you was also writing for other groups and doing background. Absolutely. Let let's stay right here for a second. Okay. Let's stay right here. Cause I said I said I said you were singing backgrounds. Tell me the top this just give me fives. Top five artists that you wrote on and you your vocals on backgrounds on. Name top five songs and the artists. My prerogative, Bobby Brown. Um, Mary J. Blige, you gotta believe, never wanna live without you, don't go. Uh, we can go into Johnny Gill, touch me. Oh man, shoot! Keep it oh going. man, keep it going. Keep it going uh, they need to the Jacksons, know. uh, the Jacksons, um, Fine Young Cannibals, uh, Luther Vandross, um, Total, Dag, um, 98 Degrees. Shit, uh, damn man, you know when you you know when you start writing, you know how that shit go. Case, look, Case, my brother Case, Raekwon, Heavy D, oh man, dang, boy George, yeah, boy George, that was that was young, I was a youngster then, um, youngster, damn. So um, here, that was, here was the thing, cause you did a lot of stuff with Teddy doing that, yeah, time. That time, and then Teddy would absolutely Teddy would use you, and then you would it'd be a, a time frame where you wasn't around, and then you'll come back back and he pull you back in, right? Tell me because you know, people can read certain things and not read certain things. I want you to tell me if you can. This is because this, this is the truth with me, you understand? And we mm -hmm. all talk about being the truth but about story. How do you? How did you feel? Did you did you make all the money that you should have made? Because you got plaques up your ass. I noticed you got plaques right. up your ass. You got crazy writing stuff. Like if you was if you did that stuff now, you would be on a, such a different type of level right now. Cause we talking about pushing right. the hit on social media and all that stuff. If that was the case, right. like, you'd be such on a different level. Did your money stack up to to the level of your writing and your your production and the records that you sold? Did it was it compatible or or you know what? You I know mean? what? It was it was compatible because at one time, one time, you know what I'm saying I was playing with them M's. You know what I'm saying they was coming in. And you know how it is, Damien. We young. We really don't know about money. You know what I'm saying? If I spend 50 grand, if I spend 50 grand, I know I'm going to make that shit next week. That's you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I, I made I made some really good money. You know what I'm saying? Some of that stuff got fucked over, like, in the beginning, part of my French. Some of that stuff was, um, you know, in the earlier days. But once I learned the game, oh, nah, we let's get money. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Let's get let's get to the bag. You know, my brand was always bigger than my record sales, always. Right. And a lot of artists that were selling more records than me, they couldn't really understand it. They was like, when it, like say for instance they come to my house or whatever, they'd be like, "Oh shit, what the fuck is going on over here?" Yeah, yeah. I just sold four million. I just sold four or five million. I don't got this shit. I don't have no is studio it? in my house. I don't have no house with five mm -hmm. bedrooms, eighteen back. You feel me? Like right. How, right. How does how does this cat got that? And, and and I want you to tell people because some people be like, sometimes you can fuck off money, and we. <clears> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I didn't even make the money that that you made because of a lot of different things. But you was writing. I wasn't doing a lot of writing and stuff. And when I did, I didn't get my credit. But that's a whole other story. That's a whole other day. Right. Right. You are not that shit, bro. Right. So, but you wrote and you and you produced and your voice was such. You were such a. A, a a a a known voice that people wanted to use you when they did that as, as as in the groups that you just mentioned the artists that you just mentioned right and so it kind of kept you going where you can say 
other ex that sold for me record was like, how is it that he's doing it? It's because your brand was relevant. You were relevant. And I, I always tell people, if you are a lead singer, I don't care what happened in the Bible, woo, woo, woo. if you're a lead singer and no voice, only you can kill yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Because people are always going to want to hear you. Like people always want to deal with Big Bum. So let me, right. let, let me go to 2000 when you, you go and you do your other record in, in 2000, Never Too Late, and you're on Flavor Unit. So you go. Yeah, I did a joint venture. Yeah, I did a joint venture with Flavor Unit. Big okay. shout out to Flavor Unit, Queen Latifah and show. How was that? We know how big Queen is, and, and we know. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Sha uh, Sha Kim. Sha Kim, you know, how was that being on Flavor Unit? You know what I'm saying? Like, what what kind of vibe was you? Did, was you were you more free? Because you said you just said you did a joint venture. So were you more free to be everything? Oh yeah, definitely that. Definitely. Um, Flavor Unit. What one thing I can say about about Queen Latifah and Shaquem, they gave me a shot. They they definitely did. You know, they did they did everything they can do as far as independent. But if they knew how to do it, like how they do it now, oh man, oh. the album would have went crazy. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. But she knew that they, you know, they didn't support the record. They didn't do the record right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But she still blessed me. The queen blessed me. I, I'm always going to salute Queen Latifah for that, man. She blessed me. Right. And Shaq Kim took care of me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Felt, 2000. So you felt good during that time. And then from that time, what happened between 2000 and 2009? What were you doing during that time? Because I, I know you had different ventures and stuff that you was doing. But between 2000 and 2009, what were you doing? Man, 2002, two, man. okay. I went on tour with Case. I was singing backgrounds for my brother Case's first big tour. And that's when I wasn't working. I wasn't doing no work. I wasn't working. I wasn't going on the road. Case was like, yo, I'm going on my first tour. You know, like, I ain't trying to, you know, would, would you come out there? I was like, yeah, I'll come. I don't care about me being bub and all that shit. Yeah, I'll come out there and get some work. Let's go. Let's get that money. Yeah. Case took care of me. You know what I'm saying? That's for my brother. Case took care of me. Went on tour. We was tearing everybody's asses up on that tour, too. We was tearing their asses up. I love Shout it. Shout out to K. I love it. So, how, yeah. long, how long did that, like, cause we got nine years. So. All right, because within, damn, okay, I, I moved to Charlotte. I mean, I moved to Raleigh. Then I moved to Connecticut. And damn, oh, from there, Oh man, I was, I was chilling, man. I was laid back. So you just lay, you was, you just laying back. But when did you? I don't want, cause I don't want to, I don't want to go ahead, cause I, I know certain things. It's like, so when did you, when did you between that time then? Because okay, June two thousand and two thousand nine and two thousand ten, today kind of reunited in two thousand ten to do gospel, like to say, right? We don't, we don't do a gospel album, and I, I think. What was it? Orchestra? Orchestrate? Orchestrate. 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 Yeah. Orchestrate. Okay. What, how was that and how long did that last? That, 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 that moment. Well, what? you know how that goes. You know, you're doing stuff independently. You're trying to feel it out. You know what I'm saying? The fellas, you know, everybody's not computer savvy and we're trying to figure it out and everybody wants to do this thing, but it, it's new rules. It's, it's not like the same. You know, it's not the music business anymore. You know what I'm saying, Dane? Like, it's really no structure with this shit. You drop a hot-ass record, and, you, and that shit catch on, and it's over. You know what I mean? And it's digital world now. You know, we come from the era we sold real records where people go to Tower Records and went online. Right, right. We had to go to mom and pop stores. We had to make sure that we right. sent those autographs and those pictures. You know what I'm saying? Right. Tower Records. Right. And spent all right. the money in the streets. You feel me? Right. Yeah. Right. But, um... We did that, you know, the test is, you know, ch check out our vocals and everything, because, you know, the fellas, you know, we still sound beautiful together, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So you felt good yeah. in 2010, you felt good making sure y'all did the orchestrate thing, blah, 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 and then you you were still, well, you still like, ah, this is cool, this, those are my boys, we still cool, but I still have something in me that I want to do, and then 
drop the No, you know what it is? You, you, you that's crazy you say that, Dame. You know what it is, Damien? It's it's this is what I do. Right. I, I don't know nothing else. Ten toes down. My feet is always on the pavement with this shit. Yeah. I'm not a big I'm not a bigger artist than you for our sales and all that. You know what I'm saying? But as a writer, I'm bigger than you. But as an artist, Damien Hall is bigger than me as an artist. But that writing shit, I'm bigger than Damien. It's like, yeah. I've never been that artist that, that sold, like I said, I never sold a mill, but I never missed a mill because I always made a mill off of every single deal. I promise you that. Yes. I, I love you. I, let me tell you something. First of all, I should, you got to do a t-shirt. You got to do a t-shirt on that, bro. I got it. You have to do a teacher on that. Cause I, I'm, I'm looking at it like, if he wasn't my man, I would keep my mouth shut and be like, I never took a meal, never took a meal. Yo, yo, cause you gotta hear the record. I did the record. The record, the, the record is so crazy. I did it with Do Law from Laws of the Underground. Yeah. And when he heard my verse, he was like, yo, you be talking real slick. You be talking real slick, Bob. Yeah, yeah. He said, "Yeah, you, yeah, your pen game is still crazy. I never sold a mill, never missed a mill, but I always made a mill over every single deal." That, uh, no, that is that is the dopest joint ever. I don't want nobody. Y'all better not do it. Oh, they can't even they, niggas. No, they can't even. They can't even. You know me. My paperwork is tight. tight. <laughs> I'll be like, Stay down. You know what I'm saying? The slogan. That shit been. That shit been. As soon as I finished it, man, we went right in the system. Let's go. No, no. Let me send that to y'all now. Yeah, that is the dopest joint ever. Let's. Did you so? Never, never go to your regular, your regular joint. You, you, you did something. Um, tug of war, right? Yeah. When did, when did you do tug of war? That's that's coming in in the late two thousands, right? Yeah, like like two thousand eight or something like that. Yeah, you did. You did tug of war. <clears throat> how, how was how was that? That was that was that was you. That was all. Yeah. You. Yeah. That, that was you saying, look, this is a different me, different. I'm going to do something different that I haven't done, quote, unquote, and I'm going to give this. What was that thought process when you were doing Tug of War, man? Man, it, it was a whole spiritual thing going on with me at that time, and I'm battling, you know what I'm saying, because the Tug of War album was called Living, Living in the Flesh was the R&B side and Died of the Flesh was the gospel side. Yeah, so I named the album actually, Tug of War. So you was actually in a tug of war spiritually. <laughs> yeah. But yourself, you was like, yeah. what? Maybe, regardless of the money, regardless of the fame, regardless of everything, you was going through something within yourself. What, it, what was that something truly? What was that thing that you was fighting? Because you was fighting. That's a fight when you're in a tug of war. What was that? Hey. Yo, dang. You, you already know it's, it's levels to this six. This um, fame and success, success shit. Success. Um, and when and when they came at me, you know, I told them niggas just suck the eggplant. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm a, I'm a real one. You you ain't right. coming with that with me. You know what I'm saying? Right. They came at me, and and if I would if I would took that oath, so here comes the blood sacrifice. Oh, let's be clear. Ooh. So I'm not with the shit. Yeah. So I'm not with yeah. So it's, so it's like I'm not I'm not with that. I'm just I'm glad that we didn't do that. We didn't sell our souls to this shit. Facts. Not one of us. Facts. Because you can tell you can tell by the numbers. The numbers don't lie. Facts. I hope y'all really listening to him. Listen, listen to me, y'all. Every time I do an interview, I try to do my best to give you respect. Give respect to the artist. Whether I know him or not. Every time I try to let them know that I put myself in into them to know things about them that probably people won't ask because um, they just didn't pay attention. Um, there is a deeper thing here because everything that glitter isn't gold, right? Everything that glitter is Oh, gold. hell no. Right. Um, everybody you was cool with at one time might not be as cool with now. Oh, no, we're not cool. Right? We were, <laughs> we were, we were kids then, so we put up with kid-like shit to now be adults and realize and take, and, and please stop me, and take the, the wall of mm. our eyes and pull all the clay off our eyes to be able to see better, to see clearer now, right? So, right, right. So in, in you pulling that, taking that clay off and going, wait a minute, 
kind of see things more, better now. I see it clearer now. You said you right, always paid, right. paid M's, you always did something. But do you do you feel that you 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 could have been and you should be in the double figures and why aren't you there? Why aren't you that the thirty million dollar guy? If I'm if I'm if I can speak, right? Right. Why do you think you're not there? You know what I'm saying? Because it it, it don't like Oh no, I know why. I know why I'm not there, like I said. You got to stay in your lane, man. You got to know 10 toes down who you are as a man and as a person with, you know, in integrity and all that shit. Like, I don't need y'all. I'm making bread without y'all. When they know you start making that real bread without them, they coming. This right. is two Grammys, this shit. I got two Grammys. What the fuck? I got two. Two? I got two. Wait. Listen, what Grammys, what, what, and, and for what Bobby, artists, and what? Bobby, Bobby and Mary. Bobby and Mary. So my thing, and then we in Rolling Stones, me and Mary for top five hundred album of all greatest albums of all times in Rolling Stones. So it's like I don't need y'all. I'm written in the books already. I can get money forever without y'all. I don't need to try to be the bigger nigga. They got the right. game fucked up out here. They thinking we all supposed to do that same dumb shit. With whoever who did what, you know what I mean? Right. We ain't got to do that shit. I love it's the fact. I love the fact that that because see, there are levels to this thing, and if, and if y'all hearing, there are tones to this thing, right? There are tones when you when you know that the passion is, nigga. You look. I'm gonna call it. You a dick rider. You playing. You you acting like you everything, and nobody else is this. And you know damn well that the level of oomph that I put into this game, and you gonna act like. It's, we ain't on the same page. We can't do the same thing, right? So and you, you can hear it inside Bob's tone where it goes up, right? It's like the tone because we got hurt in this game. We, got, we, did, get, we did get hurt in this game. We oh, yeah. Hurt. We got hurt. And, and it's oh, hard. Yeah. I don't think people realize how hard it is to disregard, let me use that word, to disregard the disrespect to disregard the disrespect that people put on you, and they know damn well that if it was behind closed doors, they would never be that way. Am I am I saying this correctly? Yes, you are. Okay. okay. See, because my thing is this: like, like I tell these cats, like, like my my cats in the hood, you know what I'm saying? They stay in tune with me, and they, you know what I'm saying? Because you know they always wanted me to win. You know what I'm saying? And so you know, barbershop talk. They was like, yo. You ever think they came to um? They ever came at Bob before? My man was like, you know they did. I said, come on, man, that nigga Bob wrote a lot of fucking big records, man. And you know how Bob rolled? That nigga roll how he rolled, ten toes down, right. by myself. Let's go get it. Let's get it. We going to get it. Let's go get it. I don't need to be with y'all, whatever elite, whoever the fuck y'all are. Right. I don't need that. Now motherfuckers gonna act like they woke now. You know what I'm saying, Damien? Oh, now y'all woke now? Oh, now y'all got love in your heart now? Not, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. That love and that woke, everybody acting like because of this COVID, the lockdown. Right? So now everybody was right. acting like, oh, right. good. But before the lockdown, I, if, if, if I'm hearing you correct, before the lockdown, uh, niggas was still on that ABC bullshit, right? The, yeah, now, the straight bullshit. And now, now that you not now with me on lockdown, oh man, you my boy, you my cat, you my whoop whoop. I want yo, Damien. Let me tell you something, man. I, I, I yo, listen, man. Cats need to stop that fronting, man. You know what I'm saying? Me, I've always been a natural born caregiver. You know what I'm saying? I give a motherfucker anything, especially if I got it. If I got it, I'm gonna give it to you. I don't care if it's money, clothes, word of advice, whatever. I'm right. far from perfect, but I'm fucking genuine. You know what I'm saying? Right. So my thing is, it's like, yo, we not going to motherfucking tolerate this fuck shit with cats doing this dumb shit. Because you can't call me your brother and you let your brother star. You fit, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't call me your brother if you know my stomach growling. Let's yo. go. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Let's, let's, let's go deeper. Hold on. 
we know that there are certain sectors in this business is clicky as a motherfucker, right? It's clicky. Yes. Yes, they are. Everybody clicky who they feel they got the bag, they feel they got more visibility, they feel they're the ones that everybody talking about, but they know for a fact, and, and, and all my people that, that come on the truth, they know. I go, I say, look in the mirror. Them niggas couldn't look in the mirror at all and say that they're being righteous. Because everything Whoa. about, yo, we, we cool because we got the movies out. Or we cool because right. we, we all, you know, are the ones that people seen and we got 25 Grammys and this Academy of American Music Award and, and this MTV right. Music Award. And so that's why we cool. So if I need you, I can call on you. And so it makes it makes the world think that all of y'all think are really cool. When some of some of them are really fuck boys. Can, are we saying this? Oh, they they fuck boys. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what it is. Come on, stop playing, Dan. Dan, we've been this business too long. You know what I'm saying? We work with the biggest and the best, nigga. We taught the whole country. We did every stadium, I mean, coliseum in this country, nigga, at least more than 50 times in our life. Facts. 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 You know what I mean, my guy? Facts. So it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter about all this success. Look in the mirror and look at yourself. Take a look at yourself. When you when the lights are off, I'm doing some. I'm doing a podcast for Behind the Lights. You follow me? And that's going to be real deep because it's about forget the red carpet, forget all the flashing light and all the cameras in front of you. Everybody take a picture of her. You know, that don't mean nothing. You know me, Damien. I'm hood, Dad. I'm, going, I'm in the bodega right now. What's up, brother? Come on, baby. Listen, I just want hey, yo, to let me, interview. Let me get the plug to brother. Taking you yeah, right. on yeah. the road to him yeah, or what he does. I love this with the passion. Listen, y'all. If y'all loving this interview, give me a thumbs up and give me that fire sign. Right now, I'll wait. <laughs> Yes, please. Thank you. I'm with my man, Damien Hall. We in the bodega. You know, I got stuck in Jersey, so, you know, I can't go. I know all your shows is canceled, too, right? But, man, but listen, listen. Even if they wasn't canceled, I'm not doing no shows, fam. I'm not Thank doing you. no yeah, that. I ain't doing that. I'm not doing that. Oh, no, nah, I ain't doing I'm not doing that. Oh, no. Nah. Ain't nobody hard up for no bread. Like, no, no, we ain't doing that. I'm not doing no bread. My house come first. Nah, nah, nah. I can't, I can't do it. I love y'all. Yeah, listen. Y'all know how I get down, man. That's why I tell y'all to always spread the news, man, because on the... You feel me? The other day is very sick because we come from a realm where... Right, right, right. Where we really put in... We put in the work. We absolutely right. put in the work. No disrespect. Now, but the work now is all online, right? It's all social media, Twitter. Facebook, uh, 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 IG, Snapchat, thing is quick on Spotify and this, and we all need that now, but this is where it's at. We used to go and grind. So we went all the talks and seeing how everybody was, yo, wait, wait, are they, are they, are they fucking us on our, on our money? What, what's, right. oh, hold on, did they give me my credit? Wait, 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 right. whose name is this on the credit? This person wasn't even right. in the studio. You feel me? Now you know it's crazy, right? yo. So it's crazy. I'm proud of you because you still push it. But before we go to your other stuff you're doing, you started doing something called the trilogy. And I think you, you had like Snoop Dogg on it. Like is that your is that your current project right now? Oh, yeah, that's my current project. I never I never dropped it. That's my current project. So I'm about to drop that joint while everybody is Quarantine and everybody's a little put, so I'm about to drop some joints. I got I got some mean. I did like 13 joints with Snoop, but I got some joints with Raekwon. I got some I got some I got some joints, but I'm gonna do it all balanced just for the people, all balanced, no, but thank, balanced. That's thank, it. Thank you so much for that. Listen to me. I, I, I'm gonna say this because I was trying to tell my brother, you know, Aaron Hall. I was trying to tell him, Aaron. Love my brother. I said this is the time when the singers need to come out and do all ballad albums. Like, your biggest records were ballads. Bro, your biggest records yeah. today were ballads. 
You feel me? Valid. Valid. So, so to yep. come out, to come out and give the ladies, these women, even these younger girls, and let them understand how to be treated as a woman, how to be respected, how to be loved, how to be right. cared for, how to how to how to just be cherished. This is the rec the records you coming out with in this trilogy record. Is that correct? Hold on. He must be in a bad area. He must be in a bad area. Bob, can you hear me, baby? I can hear you now. Your, your, your screen went out. Okay, okay, okay. Because you was, you, was, you, was, you was buffering for a second. Okay, so so you have this trilogy. You're about to drop it now. When, when can we expect when can we expect the first single of the trilogy record? And, and what and are, is it is it a feature on that on the first single? Is there a feature on the first single you drop it? No, nah, I ain't dropping no features. Nah, let's get straight Buck, to the Buck, from the muscle. Back in. Listen, don't stop for a second. Listen, y'all, I got I got 19 seconds. I want y'all to know. Thank y'all for coming in to be true. I want <clears> to come back in because I'm not finished yet. Bubba, if you don't mind, come back in. Come back in in the next 10 seconds. I love y'all. All right, so I'll come right back in. Okay, I'll come right back in. I'll see y'all in a second. Come back in. Okay.